Alrighty, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. Today I want to talk to you about aspartame. Aspartame, the silent killer. What are some other names for aspartame? Because that's what our, uh, you know, food industry loves to do is just kind of camouflage things so they can get them into your body and kill you. I'm just kidding. Just get things into your body without you knowing. But typical names are like, you know, the common one is NutraSweet, Equal, Splenda, uh, Sweet and Low. There's so many different names, right? The bottom line is aspartame is aspartame. It's a synthetically made product that's made in a lab that's pretty much chemically driven and it does nothing to help your body. It actually takes more away from your body than it actually provides you with. So that's what we call a dead food. Anything that you ingest that takes away more vitality from your body than it actually gives you. So let's look at what aspartame is, where it came from, what's going on with it. Well, the funny thing is, back in the 1970s, back in the 1970s, there was actually several studies done to show that aspartame of any kind could cause brain tumors, grand mal seizures, and even death. But today, we still have over 6,000 products that still have aspartame in it. Back in 1974, we're trying to cure cancer, we're trying to cure migraines, we're trying to cure everything in the world. Not to say that aspartame is the only thing that's causing these, but back in 1974, right, over 20 years ago, they showed that it caused seizure, seizure disorders, severe brain problems, brain tumors, and even death, cardiac problems, nervous system problems, and we're still trying to figure out where some of this stuff is coming from. The funny thing is back in 1974, there was actually a research study done. And the research study done was done by Dr. Roberts, and he was director of the um, Palm Beach Institute for Medical Research, and Dr. John Olney, and he was of Washington University. And, you know, during that time they did a study, and they actually put, the FDA, because of the study, put aspartame on hold because the effect, negative effects of they showed, you know, what happened to the body. But they actually released it again, you know, against these doctors, you know, um, research findings for, to this day, 29 years later, we have... No idea why. And the reason why is because in 1980, there was a panel that got together, and the panel unanimously ruled aspartame as unsafe, but the problem is everyone went against it, and the reason is because it makes the industry a ton of money. So when it comes to research, it really doesn't matter what the research is because most of the research is done to just kind of, you know, tickle people. You know what I mean? It's either done to prove that the, that the product works, and if they prove that it doesn't work, they don't ever publish the research. That's why you don't never see any of the research that's negative. And the problem is it's causing such an epidemic. Well, if you look at where aspartame came from, it was actually discovered in 1965 by accident by G.D. Searle. They were actually making, I think, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, some type of digestive or some type of supplement. They were researching um, um, a medical... Uh, prescription and the the actually the scientist got a bunch of the white material on his um on his hand and the powder went up to his nose and it smelled really sweet so he actually tasted it so that's how gd searle actually discovered aspartame in 1965 it was a total fluke well if we look at aspartame it's actually um a couple different substances and we'll look at how it works in the body but the interesting thing though um it's a chemical concoction, right? It's a chemical concoction of pretty much two amino acids in a chemical um, called methanol, okay? That's basically, when ingested into the human body, converts into formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is what they store dead bodies with. You want to be a walking corpse? Keep eating aspartame. Although certain amino, these two amino acids serve a purpose to the body, right? Um, the two amino acids are phen phenylalanine and aspartic acid. They do serve a purpose but when they're presented um, in excess and they were, when they're accompanied by methanol, they're basically a neurotoxin. And what aspartame does is it creates, it's, a, it's an uh, excitotoxin. It creates um, overstimulation of the neural cells in the brain and it pretty much burns them out. So it creates neural cell death, right? That's, if you look at how a lot of people are thinking, lack of concentration, brain disease, tumors, things like that. We can always correlate it, depression, with um, methanol and aspartame. Another interesting thing is that when you ingest aspartame, well, the body breaks it down and actually been shown to actually decrease 
serotonin, leading to emotional orders such as depression. Depression is a huge epidemic in our society, and you see women walking around drinking Diet Cokes, tab back in the day, but drinking Diet Cokes, eating popcorn and salad, and not really eating any food. There's some other things that happen with aspartame when you ingest it. Besides becoming a neurotoxin, and actually I said, your body breaks it down into methanol. Your body actually can't get rid of this methanol. It actually builds up in the body over time. And even if you stop eating aspartame or drinking aspartame, it's going to continually be in the body. Right? The funny thing is, aspartame is in 6,000 products that you guys are eating today. It's hidden in everything. Cereals, box foods, Pop-Tarts. It's in drinks that you're eating. Anything that says low-fat, no-fat, diet, calorie-reduced has aspartame in it. You might as well just, you know, shoot yourself because drinking that stuff is going to lead to illness and it's going to lead to an earlier death. There's a millions of symptoms related to aspartame. And the funny thing is, over 80% of the complaints, 80% the FDA gets every single year about food, the number one is aspartame. I bet you never knew that. And why is it still on the shelf? It's a mystery. Some of the symptoms and diseases that aspartame has been uh, known to cause is multiple scler scler uh, sclerosis, memory loss, hormonal problems, hearing problems, epilepsy, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, hypoglycemia. It's a carcinogenic um, in the body, right? Formaldehyde's a carcinogenic, and on and on and on. If you want to learn more about aspartame and its many you know, diseases and symptoms, go to a website called doorway.com. D-O-R-W-A-Y.com. It's a great website. The funny thing about um, methanol is, in the human body, is that the EPA suggests that on a limit, methanol consumption be about 7 to 8 milligrams, right? That's, that's what they say is essentially safe, right? In my opinion is you shouldn't be taking in any of it, right? But one liter of aspartame sweetened beverage or food contains 50, about 56 to 60 milligrams of methanol. Do the math on that, right? What's 8 into 60? It's like 7 to 8 over, 7 to 8 times over the recommended dosage, right? The problem with that is you're getting such an excess of these amino acids and methanol, which leads to earlier signs of these symptoms and diseases, right? The most common side effects of just methanol poisoning is headaches, uh, ear buzzing, dizziness, tinnitus, vertigo, which is super common. Uh, gastrointestinal disturbances, frequent chills, memory loss, numbness, shooting pains in the extremities, which I have in a lot of clients, and people think it's uh, nerve-related, but it's actually coming from aspartame. Behavioral disturbances, dizziness, anything that you can think of. The funny thing is with aspartame is when you eat it, it actually signals the brain that food's coming in the body. But because there's no nutrients coming in, the signal keeps signaling that you need to eat, you need to eat, because no nutrients are coming in. So that's why you can eat a whole bag of chips, a whole thing of Oreos, but you couldn't sit down and eat a 16-ounce thing of steak because we need the steak, signals the brain nutrients are coming in, and when, when the brain has enough nutrients, the signal shuts off. With aspartame, it keeps going and keeps going. That's why one of the key points is people that want to lose weight, when you eat aspartame, you actually gain weight. And there was a study done on rats, and the study was basically done um, with rats, sugar, and aspartame. And they gave some rats sugar, some rats aspartame. And they showed over, I can't remember what it was, I think it was a two-month period, that the rats eating sugar actually lost more weight than the rats eating aspartame. Now, I'm not advocating eating sugar, but all these people wanting to lose weight eat the low-fat, no-fat stuff, low-calorie, and they're ingesting aspartame. Well, that signal in the brain keeps going and keeps going. And it, there's no satiation, so you keep eating. Like I said, have you ever sat down and eat a box of, of candy or Oreos, and you can eat the whole box, still be hungry, but full, kind of like a really oxymoron, but you can't sit down and eat a 16-ounce piece of steak. It's because there's tons of aspartame in it. Tons of aspartame. So go to doorway.com. Hopefully you've learned something brief about aspartame. I'm sure most of you know that it's dangerous. The problem is there's tons and tons of women walking around eating the no-calorie, low-calorie foods, drinking Diet Cokes out of cans, which is a no, no, uh, double negative. So... Hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you start to cut the stuff out of your diet. And we'll talk to you later.